Hello people, and welcome back to part 5 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much indeed for all of the support last time out. You guys very much enjoyed our episode on how to use high density. Uh, from a more aesthetic point of view, to put together something of a midtown, right? Something of a practice for our eventual downtown. And of course, who couldn't enjoy the inclusion of trams from the Snowfall DLC. So thank you so much for all the support. I'm glad you guys are still enjoying this series. However, in today's episode, we are going to introduce uh, two new DLCs alongside develop your first four-way highway interchange, for which we're going to use an Imperator design, which I think he's taken inspiration from Ricky King, but links will be in the description anyway. Uh, we're going to introduce mass transit and natural disasters. Uh, natural disasters isn't really a great DLC, but it does have some really good functionality. So let's come into landscaping and disasters, and we have our disasters over here. Now there's something that's really quite handy from the vanilla perspective from the Natural Disasters DLC, and this is the option to collapse a building. This can be used on cemeteries or landfill sites that are full, and you don't have to wait for them to empty out anymore. This is amazing. So we'll kind of show this off. So you see this one right here is 9% full. The building is not empty, so we can't delete it. However, if we let the game play and we let the building collapse, give it a hot minute, it then will become destroyed, and you can delete it. So whilst Natural Disaster is the main kind of appeal and bulk of the DLC does come from destroying your city, it does have uh, some purpose and functionality for the vanilla players. Although the real meat and potatoes of today's build is going to be totally ripping this out because this is a three-way interchange at the minute, but it looks terrible. Don't like this configuration at all. So we're going to build our first four-way interchange. So these things, especially when you're first playing the game, if you are following along as a noob in the noob's guide, um, these things are super intimidating to build the first time. They can be quite complicated, but I'm going to hopefully talk you through a few tips today that can help you form your own types of interchange. You don't have to follow the exact shape I'm going to go for. You can use the same ideas and principles in order to make this thing look nice. Otherwise, let's build a four-way highway interchange, shall we? So the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and relocate some services over here. Uh, we're going to break a pathway there, that's fine. Not too bothered about that one. I will also take this away too, and this one as well. I also want to remove all of these zonings along here because we're going to want the room to develop this. I often find with highway interchanges, giving yourself more room than you initially need is really going to help you put them together a little more effectively. And then finally, uh, rip out all the existing highway as well. Okay, and just get rid of it up until I'll probably take it back to my little service interchange over here. And then let's bring this back up until... Yeah, probably the bridge is going to be a good point over there. And then likewise over here as well. Just rip everything out. And this gives us a nice big space to work with. Uh, keep your game paused uh, during this process because we've now broken the highway and this will kill the city. And no one's going to be able to get in or out of everywhere we've built now. So make sure you keep it paused. So for those that follow my channel, um, <laughs> you will know that highway interchanges are probably my weakest point in the game. No. No? <laughs> oh, don't cry, are you? <laughs> but we'll see what we can do here together, alright? So the first tip that I find useful uh, for making interchanges is to actually do some terraforming first, uh, because playing with different layers of height is going to allow you to work with different levels of road network a little bit easier. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to pick out a height that we want our kind of left to right or east to west road to flow here. Okay, so let's go for, how about this layer right here? And again, I'm using the same principles uh, that we've used to terraform our tourism area a couple of episodes ago. So hopefully now you're starting to get a little more familiar with the terraforming tools. So let's just go ahead and push out this layer so we're nice and level and flat. And there we go, we now have a nice flat layer to work with. However, what I'm going to do is bring uh, these kind of north to south roads um, above these two roads here. Okay, so what I want to do now is pick out another layer of height. And again, there's a little tip we can use with our road height in order to do this. So let's say if we go for a 12 meter road there. And then we can just now terraform against this until we come up to a similar height. Okay, that seems maybe about perfect. And again, you want to grab level terrain. Right click that height. And then we can now terraform at this height. And then start to prepare 
the north and south roads. Also to make sure that you re-terraform your initial test height as well. Then you can just right-click this one. I'm going to have this here. Again, your terraforming at the start will be a little bit rough. I often find that the four-way highway interchanges are a build that looks significantly ugly before it even remotely starts to look good. So just bear with the nasty terrain. It can all be tidied up at the end. Okay, and that's going to be about right for me. So again, what I want to do here is grab a little slope tool. I'm going to right-click that top height where we want to go. I'll be up to about here, I think, right? And then we can level this out again. Just gives us a nice little platform. Wonderful. Might want to move my bus depot as well. So let's go ahead and throw this somewhere else in the industrial area. That'll do for right now. Fantastic. So let's come into our highways. We're going to grab uh, the regular highway roads. And this is going to now flow up here. Okay. And this one's going to do exactly the same thing. So now we have this road in. We're going to bring these two back together. But these are not going to be uh, the final configuration here because we actually want this gap to be uh, a little bit wider. Okay. So now we're going to bring our, our bridge out. Again, we can elevate up by three points. Come straight across. If you want to make sure that you're maintaining absolute symmetry, don't forget your redraw trick. You can see this as a distance of 1460 back to the node on the land. And we know that's where we're going to want to stop. So we're going to bring this terraforming forward. And then we can crawl back down to the earth at 1460. And then this can now, you know, continue into this side of the map and whatever you want to build over here. And of course, we will fill out this area during our series, but, uh, you know, it can now extend over this direction. I'm going to repeat exactly the same process for this side now as well. You can snap to those road guidelines. It's going to make sure that everyone's nice and level and symmetrical. Really makes a difference with highway interchanges. Although, if you actually look at them in Google Earth, very few in real life are actually symmetrical. They tend to be pretty lopsided and relatively ugly when you look at real life inspiration. Okay, so this is a really basic concept at the minute. We've just terraformed up a layer so we can come over. Of course, you can just have this as a regular ramp if you don't want to do the terraforming, but it's nice to have some different gradients within the map as well, you know. Not everything's on the same layer. Okay, so that's our first nice and kind of simple setup done. We're going to come in and grab some dirt roads now to set up some guidelines. And like making sure that all your snapping is on. We want to come over this way. So let's go for... This one here. Just going to draw out some roads. Now, if you want them to be equidistant to the other side, you can just click the node under the bridge and then drag it over to the highway and see it's a distance of 620. And you can repeat that exact same process on this side as well. If you wanted to, you can maybe start here and find out we're maybe a little bit further out than that. There you go. There's 620. We can draw these out. Boom. And then with the roads in the middle now, we want to delete all of them. Okay, we'll take all of these away. Just get rid. So the next thing we'll now do is we're going to widen the distance between the roads that sit in the middle of the highway here. So I'm going to do this by snapping to my road guideline. I'm going to come right under the bridge and then just move across to the notch where it can fit. See if we try to draw it here, it's going to intersect with the pillar. Space is already occupied. However, we can draw it just out to the next one. And you'll notice that it's not quite in line with this. See how it just kind of snaps off of that angle? That's on purpose. We want that to happen. Right. Going to have that one in there. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Snap into the road guideline as close as we can. And you'll notice the same thing here. See how we're just snapping off that angle. Again, it's what we want to happen. I'm going to come off my road guideline now. I'm going to bring them out up to these markers. Snap it back on for this one. So make sure we're level. And then same over here as well. If you'd like to know the distance of the redraw between my two highways here, the top one is 350 and the bottom one is 350 as well. So perfect equidistance here. The distance between the standard highways is like 280. So it's like a tile out from ideally where you want it to be. So just snap to the road guideline under the bridge. It'll widen that gap for you. So just so happens that on Diamond Coast, the highways aren't actually perfectly parallel. So you see, this is kind of the curve that we want. You can see how it's a little bit sharper here, so I'm probably going to push this back a little bit just so that curve isn't as quite as intense, but we'll worry about that. 
join our detailing timeout today if we need to. So now we're going to work on getting uh, a couple of off ramps set up. Okay, so I'm going to join a frame for these first with uh, some gravel paths because it's going to help us keep uh, nice and symmetrical either side. Because if you're going to work with these kind of curved ramps that come down and under, if they're not perfect either side, it does look a little bit weird. So the symmetry is important for these. So I'm going to come to my road guideline and just the uh, tile over. I'm going to come off road guideline once I've snapped to it. We can see that five marker, the second blue line, and we want to come down by six units, which is pretty easy to measure in the gravel pathways because they cost ten dollars each. So we want to draw in. So we're going to draw in a little perfect six by six cube. We're also going to do the same out this side, and then again out at the bottom over here. But then I'm going to grab our freeform tool and come into road guideline snapping again, and we're going to snap into these guys right here. Hopefully this is fairly easy to follow so far. That's going to give you a perfect frame for what you need. We now want to come into roads and we're going to grab a highway ramp. We're going to come onto the straight road tool. And now we want to elevate up onto the road guideline here by three elevation points. So we are at the same height as the highway. Again, snap into road guideline is going to keep everyone nice and symmetrical. Now we're going to bring this down. And we're going to follow that same format that we have with these roads over here. All right. Freeform, snap, and then freeform, and then snap, okay? And then we are going to run straight into the highway. If you are getting space occupied issues, it's just a terraforming problem. So just come back into your terrain tools. I'm going to level away and just cut off a tiny little bit of that ridge. Again, like I said earlier, these things will look pretty ugly before they start to look good. So just bear with it. And then this road can now come straight under. Okay, and again, we can measure this if we want, so we make sure that we're equidistant either side. Why don't we go for a nice 20 measurement there for right now? Okay, and that's going to give you a little nice symmetrical off-ramp. You can't eye them up, but uh, using Imperator's kind of dirt frame trick to snap it all in really helps with the symmetry. You're going to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side now. Again, using your uh, dirt roads as guidelines to... Help everything fit in a little easier, okay? And there you go, okay? So, using the dirt road frame trick, it's going to help keep everyone super amazingly symmetrical, which is really going to appeal to the final visual of the interchange. Alright, so there we go. So now we'll talk about connecting in these two lanes. So I don't want them to just come straight back into the bridge like this and connect there because I also want to have another slip road come off of this one that connects onto this lane here. So people travel in this direction can go that way. So if you're not playing with the Mass Transit DLC here, then things will be slightly different for you because with Mass Transit, you do get the option to use two lane highways, uh, which helps with something called uh, lane mathematics. And we'll have a little discussion about lane maths as we come to build the interchange here today. So I now know I'm going to want to delete this frontage road system because it's going to kind of be in the way of what I want to do. So let's just get rid of those guys. And then come into our two lane highway from the Mass Transit DLC. If you're not playing with Mass Transit, then just use the regular highway ramps. It won't, it won't be a huge difference, but it can help with traffic. I'm going to draw this up by a distance of 10 tiles to run parallel with the highway. And then this is going to curve back in by a distance of 450. And then we're going to come off now to discuss lane mathematics. So as one lane peels off, it's going to go down into a one lane highway ramp. And likewise with this one over here as well. So it's very much the case of, you know, one minus two equals one. That's quick lane maths. It's just about adding and subtracting lanes as people have options to leave the highway. It's it's pretty easy concept to understand. And again, we can just match our uh, elevation points now. To the road guideline and keep everyone hooked in. And likewise over here again, I'm going to want to actually soften this out a little bit with, uh, actually let's do some sloping, yeah, let's, let's slope this one down. So again, using our slope tool that we used in the tourism episode, I'm just going to bring this one out now with a little bit of freeform. You can keep sticking to road guidelines here if you like, but it's kind of up to you as to how obsessed you are with the symmetry. 
then it can start coming down. So now is going to be a good point to go and hook this one in, which I'll go for that node right there. Get that bottom lane hooked in, and then our next lane can come down and hook into there. Now again, one plus one equals two. That's quick lane maths. So hopefully that concept's pretty easy to understand, you know, both of these can merge in. And then they're going to come back on to the highway. We'll also use some four lane highways here today as well. Once we come to sort out the lane mathematics in the middle. All right. And that's going to hook in uh, this side of the highway now. They can go straight on. They can go right. And they can come left. So the way to think about it is every direction has to travel three ways if it's a four way interchange. And that formula continues to carry on. Likewise, if you're playing with a five way interchange, then each direction must have four ways of travel. And it's essentially now a case of repeating this, but just on the opposite side over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now we have those entry lanes uh, set up for either side. So just a quick point here while we're talking about interchanges in general. Um, you don't want two interchanges really close together. So I know that I'm going to need to bring off like my next slip ramp from like this direction, for example. This space right here between this on-ramp and this off-ramp is way too short. At leave at least 10 tiles, 20, 30 possibly if you can, between highway interchange ramps. The traffic AI will not enjoy this. So I'm just going to fix that problem by removing these ramps right here. So if people now want to travel in this direction or get into the city this direction, they have to come through the new interchange and then down into this system that we developed at the start of the series. So they still have ways, but I'm going to leave these two on here. I'll probably redesign this at some point. It looks pretty horrific now, but it's serving a purpose for us. So again, first of all, I'm just going to align the ramp alongside the highway and then connect it in. It's just going to help with staying parallel. So now we want this road to start ascending. I'm going to come off the road guideline here and moving in intervals of 12. It's the maximum slope distance. I'm going to start crawling up. Okay, so that's an increment of uh, four presses of the page up and down key. Okay, I'm going to bring it a touch closer. Again, moving up by a single step. Grab our freeform tool and we now want to place the pillar in the middle of the highway here and then come up again by another two points. Again, just jiggle it around until you find a nice placement. Uh, continually just check your gradient to make sure you're not totally out of the realms of possibility. Because again, like I said, this is where interchanges can get a little bit kind of gnarly and ugly. Okay. This one's going to come across now, and we're going to drop down because we've moved up onto the next elevation. Again, this is why we want to leave all this space between the highways, because we want room for the pillars. If we were playing with the natural vanilla highway space, you can see how narrow this is. It makes it a much smaller place to get the pillars in. So it's going to help you, okay? Then again, come back to your freeform tool. And you can just start to kind of aim up now where you're going to come in and land back down. So that's going to be one overpass road, okay? Looks horrific for right now, but bear with it. So when I'm doing this second slip road now, what I want to do is have the pillars somewhat in the same place. So we can see that this one is in the central reservation, and then the next pillar is just to the right of the next slip lane. So I want to try to replicate that, okay? So I want to go from the central reservation across just to the adjacent side of the slip road. We're going to come down by an elevation point again, remember. And then we're going to come back into our freeform curves. And just like the other side, we can now start to descend, slowly but surely, back into the city. 
All right. Very cool. We can bring this one back around now as well. And again, slowly start to come down. Take this one away now. Usually find that with these really long flowing highway ramps, keeping the gradients as smooth as possible is really going to help the aesthetic appeal of it. So slightly mend that one. Cool. And then again, don't forget your directions. So what I'm going to do here now is upgrade this one into two-way or two-lane. And then again, lane mathematics is going to come into play. I'm going to have this one run alongside and then big sweeping curve just so it's pretty much touching the kind of circle ramp here. And then these two are now going to meet together. Okay, so I'm going to bring this one straight up now. And if the terrain's a little severe, you can always soften that, which I think I am actually going to do here. So let's go into our soften tool. And then we're just going to line up with the uh, road guideline of the highway again, exactly like we did uh, over here. The distance of 150 each side. And then our little, little bridge can start coming down this way now. We'll hook in there. And then this one's going to sweep around. And then come in there as well. Again, so late mathematics coming into play. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then the two will now feed back into the main highway. Not at that angle though. Let's try again. There we go. Slightly nicer. And then that's going to provide, you know, people traveling this direction. Uh, they themselves uh, can now travel in three different directions. They can go straight on. They can go right over this way. Or they can come left and back over this way. So that's going to be that one changed up. And where we have all these spaces between, this is really nice places to start placing frontage roads and getting some like highway side office zoning in but we're slowly coming together if feel like we again it's now a similar process of doing this uh, over here again as well we can upgrade into uh, two lane road as we leave the highway and then as we switch off here we will come into free form and i'm going to do this because we're working with such a tight little narrow gap just going to eyeball it myself. Hopefully that's not too horrendous. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, let's, uh, let's shatter this. There was a one-way system there, though, so we need to make sure that we do resolve that. Uh, let's come ahead and grab a regular road. That's going to be fine. The power stations are actually here, so I think now is going to be a good point to relocate them. Because, again, they're kind of in the way. You know, and don't be afraid to delete infrastructure either. You know, nothing has to be permanent in cities. Okay, the city grows and changes. And again, this road is pretty pointless now. That can just go away. Cool. And then this can now uh, come back in and meet up with the ground. Again, this power station is in my way. <laughs> Everything is in the way today. Let's move this over here. There we go. And we'll do some like uh, pedestrian paths over this uh, interchange as well. So people can actually walk across the other side of the highway. Yeah, I think I'm just going to align with road length and angle with the highway first of all. There we go. That should be okay for me. And we can now just amend these. This wants to be two lane. We'll grab our one way roads again. And now we're just going to bring these down. See if that curve isn't quite lending itself exactly how you want it. Just come in and redraw it. There we go. And then this one can come in as well. So if it's just giving you a little bit of grief, then it's probably helpful just to draw it in from the other angle first. All right, and then connect in. And then again, switch your directions up. Although there is a touch of junk there now, isn't there? Yes, there is. Let's see if we can reform this curve because it has just lost a little bit of its finesse. There we go. That's a little more pleasing, isn't it? And then this one can now just come uh, back into the city, for which we will need to, again, just remove uh, some initial existing infrastructure. Which this is, again, just kind of a bulk of power stations sat over this side now, so... Now we're redeveloping it. It can all just be shifted over here. And again, not forgetting the trip with the landfill sites. Uh, let's demolish it, let the game briefly play. And then it'll go. Cool. So we can now remove all this over here. So you see, when it, when one does get a full, don't have to wait for this to empty now. Just use natural disasters to empty it. 
Right. Very nice. And then change the directions. And there you are. There is a four-way highway interchange. Might not be the most symmetrical thing in the world, and like I said, interchanges are certainly my weak point within the game. I always have been, <laughs> even after seven years. Uh, just anything more than a four-way is just boggles my mind. And uh, But, you know, this is kind of a real base, simple one. It's going to hook everyone in in a multitude of directions, so we kind of see how we have the shifted slip ramps here. They're not quite level. You know, we're seeing that pattern repeat this side as well. And uh, just because of the distance we're covering here with the, the off-ramp, although it's not quite straight, is it? Yes, we want to sort that out. <laughs> That's not a good design. Because where it curves off at a different angle. But you know, and once you play the game now, with everyone hooked in, uh, you'll just see the, the interchange come to life a little bit more. Okay, so we'll definitely talk about decorating these things. Um, now we have the new content creator trees. I 100% start coming in with, you know, some of the, the taller palms. You know, these are going to work great in repeated patterns coming down the highway. Um, not that we haven't actually introduced the DLC yet, but I'm a huge fan of zoo fences to serve as some kind of crash barrier. These do come with the part life DLC. If you don't have part life, then don't worry about it. It's just an aesthetic choice. Again, I haven't introduced part life into this series yet, so I'm not going to use them. But if you do, then you can. Okay, you can even discuss like well, some like generic date palms. You have to sit across here and maybe just have like a single California palm in the middle. Whatever you're feeling, uh, these things are open to decoration. Uh, lots of bushes is really nice. Uh, just kind of all over the interchange in general. Just get lots of bushes down. Okay, and you can discuss uh, some highway art if you want, which is something that we're doing uh, kind of quite a lot in. Uh, my modded City Skylines build, Ilos. You want to maybe draw in some shapes using like a vanilla gravel path texture. Then you absolutely can, okay. You can add many different things to these interchanges and, you know, just come up with your own decoration palettes. Uh, rocks as well, you know, come ahead and squeeze in some of these rock decals in the, in the loops. I'm pretty sure one of these big boys can even fit in here as well. Okay. So many different possibilities to decorate the interchange here today. So we will certainly uh, come through during our detailing time lapse today and amend this interchange a little bit. Definitely want to tidy up this straight road piece here. And also mimic this curve over here so it's maybe a little more true to this one. But, uh, you know, that's going to be a nice base shape for us. Uh, you can play your game now and you can watch your uh, brand new interchange uh, function. Which is immensely satisfying. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. So now we'll talk about how we can uh, round off the highway now because last time we built some sort of interchange I like this one, a little service interchange, the highway carried on and it's going to carry on here as well. But over this point now, um, I actually want to end the highway, okay? So this is going to fall back into city uh, to whatever lies over in this direction. However, what I want to have a little chat about is what happens when you draw roads over trees. So the vanilla game has a maximum tree count, but what happens is when you draw a road over trees, it doesn't actually delete the tree. It still counts towards your tree count. So when I delete the road here, you will see the trees reappear. If you're working with an area like this, that's quite heavily forested, I would definitely try and clear them out. Uh, the console players do have access to a forest brush, but for some reason the PC players don't. There is a mod for a forest brush that if you're on the PC I would highly recommend getting. It is a massive quality of life improvement to the game. But without that mod it is a case of just grabbing your bulldoze tool and just deleting as many of them as you can. You can just hold the click down. You don't need to keep clicking. You can just move your cursor around. So I'll clear out some of these trees and then we'll talk about how we can round off a highway exit. Okay, so I've cleared out enough trees to round out the exit now. So we're going to come back into our three lane highway roads, come back onto oil snapping. And again, kind of similar to what we talked about uh, over here with not having two on and off ramps so close to each other. We want to make sure we're respecting that rule here as well. So I've got what a distance of 1330 there. Let's redraw these out. So we're at the same tile length. Let's go for 30 tiles. Connect in there as well. Again, you can terraform the landscape here if you want everything to kind of be uh, on the same playing field, which I think I am going to do just because we're going to be using a roundabout here. 
Uh, this is going to be the highway exit we used in Palavan. Uh, really simple and effective one. Uh, it looks great as well. All right. So let's go for a small roundabout in the middle. Okay, you can judge the placement there. That's going to be great. Uh, likewise, when we worked with roundabouts, uh, when we made our first service interchange over here, uh, we want to make sure that we are locking the roundabout in place by drawing across through the middle of it so it doesn't warp when we connect in the roads. I'm going to take another 10 off here, so it's actually going to be 20 units now. Then I'm going to come down into two-lane highway. Again, if you're playing without the mass transit DLC, then just use regular highway roads for this. That's in there too. These are now going to come underground as close as you can get them to the highway, which is 256 for me. Again, everyone's distances might be a little bit different. And then bring it straight the way under. And then come back up above ground. Same thing on this side too. Up, and then delete this one as well. Uh, you can upgrade your two roads to the left and the right into four or six lane arterial. Definitely use a four or a six lane here because, you know, this is the end of the highway. There's going to be a significant amount of traffic coming and going from this point. You know, and this can now match up with the rest of your city's road network. You can begin to map out road networks over this side now and start to plan in at various more builds. Okay. So now that we have kind of the main road network set up, uh, we can come back and introduce four lane roads or four lane highways, which I talked about earlier as well. So let's come back into our highways and scroll towards the end where we will find a four lane version. So the segment before the slip ramp, we want to upgrade into four lane. Okay. And then the first section of the slip ramp wants to go down into a one lane. Now you'll notice what this does. It creates a dedicated turning lane on the highway, which means that anyone that wants to go straight forward can use these three lanes, and if they want to turn right, they have to come into this lane. Likewise, they'll enter this lane and repeat the same process. If they go in right, they'll use this lane. If they're going straight on, then they'll use the left lane. So I hope that kind of the lane mathematics explanation here is going to help. Um, it can really help with bad traffic, especially if you're experiencing traffic issues. You know, doing this kind of lane mathematics stuff uh, will really help, and it's a process that you want to repeat each of the uh, slip lanes as well. So you can see how we have two turning lanes here. That's not what we want, and we still maintain two turning lanes as we come in, which is why we want to downgrade into a one-way, and then it works over here as well. So just repeat that for each of your slip ramps, and you'll start working with lane mathematics, okay? Same over here too, but uh, I'll do that during my detail time-lapse. And, you know, we've got to begin to change in now. Uh, so what you want to surround this with is really kind of up to you, you know, if you want to match some of the heights, some high density residential uh, nearby, but of course not too close to the highway uh, can help complement it, which I think is what I'm going to do uh, because the city uh, is still screaming for some uh, residential demand. So let's come back into our road network frames now and we'll start playing uh, with some new ideas. So let's go for a little road off of this way here and we'll bring this in and then we can start to position Maybe a little bit of commercial to sit up against the highway. Okay, so let's go for about something like that. All right, and I'm not going to ter terraform too much here, or at all really. Okay, not too bad. So of course, now we're expanding the city out into a brand new area. It's important that we maintain services and public transport because people are going to need to want to come and go from here. So the most obvious public transport route to extend from this point would be the trams from last episode, which I think I'm happy to bring in. And we can bring them through the industrial area. And then also over the uh, highway as well, which will look quite nice. And then we can bring them down uh, into the new frame here. Which I think will be nice, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab our tram roads. We're going to upgrade. And we're going to take this one through here. Bring it through the industrial area down here as well. And I think what I'll do here is we'll upgrade this into tram road. And then likewise here. So I think I'll make a little free curve. Okay. And then bring this down. Saving that tile between the road again as well. And then we'll go for this one. And then we can just curve it back into the road. And then why not let the kind of tram network flow through this space. On a tram only route again, plenty of decoration opportunities. Let's not forget, of course, about our water. We are very 
uh, nearly due another water source at this point as well. So we can perhaps use a water tower uh, to decorate the interchange as well. There's no reason why that uh, wouldn't work. Although, bear in mind, you don't want it this side of the highway because you can see all the pollution here. Uh, it will pollute the water, so definitely keep it away from industry if you're going to be placing in uh, a water tower. And why don't I go for... Maybe a little spot alongside the highway. It does have a noise pollution value though, so I want to make sure it's not too near any residentials. How about here? Gets it into the system. I don't think that'll be too bad, right? I think I'm fairly happy with that. Kind of matches the height of the overpass road as well, I think. So I think I'm happy with some kind of nice commercial vibes to develop. Uh, facing out onto the highway. And then likewise, I'm going to start playing with some high-density residential here. Let's start bringing in some roads. I'm going to start intersecting behind. And I'm going to use the same kind of ideas and techniques that we used for using high-density uh, last time because you know, specifically zoning is going to be massively helpful for it in terms of keeping things nice and even. And also start mixing in some more park areas here if you like. We're going to help increase land value, of course. Okay, let's get the game going on three speeds so we can start seeing uh, some growth through here. Let's go for some 4x4s four there. Do 4x3s. Four Maybe a little bit of mixed commercial in here too, okay? And up here too. And again, all your walkability techniques that we've been playing with throughout the series can now be uh, brought into these areas. So I'm aware that mass transit also brings in monorail, but the city is not at a point yet where it needs monorail. Uh, we will use it eventually, but just not for right now. So let's get the trams flowing around here now. Let's come in with some tram road connectivity over here. And again, if this system needs to be expanded, uh, we have that room saved and we can carry it on over there. But more than likely, we'll bring in another method of public transport now to meet with the trams. Of course, getting some power warnings, we will need to give them a little temporary power connection until it all sinks through. Of course, you can take these into industrious vibes if you want. Bearing in mind, we have removed a little bit of industry, so you can replace it to this side of the highway now. Again, everyone's city and demands are going to be different as the game and simulation goes on. Go ahead and get these trams flowing around here now, so we'll go ahead and grab the tram stop roads. And they're going to come down here, so let's just make a stop over this point. It's going to help serve the industrial area again. And then we'll bring it through this point. Have them stop over there. And then it can stop maybe here as well. I think it'd be nice to have it stop by the basketball court. And then again, it's going to maybe want to stop here as well so we can move the uh, stop that was here just onto this road now rather than forcing it back into the tram square. Someone else see our trams start to flow. So it'll be interesting to see how many people actually choose to pick this up. So there's a couple of people already. Head in there now, which is good. We're going to see them come over the highway as well, which is yet just more kind of you know, transport infrastructure beginning to develop and help decorate the city as well. It's also carrying like expanding the road network, so we meet up with the road over here, and we'll hopefully start seeing some people using this section of the highway soon as well. And again, it's now just a case of bringing out your road networks in whatever kind of pattern and designs you've chosen. Of course, Google Earth is a uh, a wonderful point of inspiration here for people to go and find different neighbourhood designs or you know, maybe try recreate something, a neighbourhood that's near you, uh, where you live at the minute. There's plenty of possibilities in City Skylines, okay? Let me bring these down. Start mapping out some more zonable spaces. If you want to move away from the grid, you know, start coming on your freeform tool and start creating some curved roads over here if you like. Different shapes and sizes can always help variate. A uh, city, if you find you're kind of stagnating with relatively boring grid patterns and, you know, maybe a little bit uninspired. Start playing with different shapes and using your tools a little bit differently. Uh, you'll eventually find kind of a style and a theme that kind of suits you, you know? Okay. So likewise, we're going to want to make a lot of these buildings historical. We did have a comment last episode actually to say uh, maybe leave one of them kind of not historical, so we can see 
what a hideous level 5 building looks like, which I think is a good shout. We do have a few of them that aren't historical. Um, this one is beginning to teeter on the edge of horrible, but <laughs> it's still acceptable. So I've just made a few of them unhistorical, so as the game carries on, I'll point out a few of the more horrible assets once they come in. So we've got here, we've got not enough educated workers, that's fine, let's check out education levels. Highly educated workers, that's going to be fine. We do have the university in now, so that problem will eventually resolve itself. Again, let's just carry on satisfying those demands of the city, which at the minute is very much residential focused. A little bit of commercial in there too. You know, think about how these assets are going to sit around the entrance to your new suburb. Start creating some more designs over here. Again, we can see possibilities for walkability. Bring all this through, likewise over here too. And also kind of bring in a decorative path that sits between this space if you want and start maybe bringing in some of your new content creator grasses to fill out spaces where it doesn't quite fill it out fully and a little palm in there as well. That's some overgrowth around there. Bottom of the bridge where no one walks. And then we'll hope to see this place come to life a little bit more. You no, know, important to keep checking for more angles as well to make sure that your new builds are sitting inside along the new interchange nicely. Of course, our water tower is going to want power, which will hopefully sink through. Now, with a little more commercial over here, all right? And look, there's already opportunities now for like a big uh, walking path to span over the highway, right? Very much like we did with this one by the metro station. No, it's going to help people cross the road. Uh, stop them from using the pedestrian crossings, which is going to help alleviate traffic if they can just use a pathway. You can use that exact same kind of theory and design to cross over a highway as well. So let's do that together. Let's come into a dirt path, or a regular path actually. So I think because of the texture of the walking path on the ground, I'm going to use the same kind of theory and designs that we used with the bicycle highway. I'm just going to elevate it just by one step. It comes up this side. And then as we cross over, we will go out by 82. And then up by two more elevation points. And then cross over the highway. And then I'm going to come off road length now. And then we'll match it up to this point. Then bring this through. I've right. actually just realised that this can be one-way tram road because the line isn't coming back. So let's make this a one-way uh, tram-only road. Okay, because the stop isn't coming back this way, so it'll be okay. And we can probably double up this length over the other side as well. Find out a distance of 102. Start coming back down. And we'll hopefully start to see the AI. Pick this up as an option now, okay? So rather than even to having to drive or take public transport or walk all the way around, they've just got a little high-speed access point now to walk over, which they'll start to pick up. And likewise, you can repeat that same idea over this side as well. But, uh, you know, there's currently nothing for them to walk to over here, so a little bit pointless at the minute. But there we go, okay? So start settling all this new design into the suburb and also using it to decorate the highway too. However, guys, that feels like a good place uh, for a detailing time lapse. We have a little bit of work to do here today. Uh, I'm just going to extend my slip ramps here because I don't like how sharp this curve is. I'm just going to bring them down a little bit further. I also redraw this curve in as well to try and match it up a little bit more to this one so it's a little bit smoother. And uh, come in and let the new kind of road network sit in a little bit nicer against the highway infrastructure and also carry on uh, or come up with a design for my interchange with a repeated tree pattern and then place in some more rocks around the interchange as well. And then also decorate uh, the little roundabout that sits over here too. Okay. But lots of detailing work to do. Let's detail it up and we'll be right back.
Hey guys, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the episode, likes, comments, and shares below really do help out my channel equally as much. If you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. And if you've really enjoyed it and would like to help support my work, there are links down to Instant Gaming and Patreon below. I hope that you've found your first highway into change not too difficult to work with. And they really can be quite intimidating to put together your first time, especially when it's anything more than a three-way. At least for me, some people might find them a lot easier and might find that they just love building highway interchanges. I know there's a few people in our Discord that just build interchanges and pretty much nothing else. Looking at 2C. <laughs> you know, definitely go check out some of the City Skylines content creators as well. Uh, Imperato is probably the best vanilla interchange designer, I'd say. Um, just some insane designs from Imperator. And if you're interested in diving into kind of the lane mathematics of City Skylines and learning how the traffic AI functions, then Biffa uh, is one of the best channels for working with traffic, uh, especially on the PC with the Traffic Manager mod, which dramatically improves uh, the traffic AI. So I will leave both of those channels linked down below if you want to go and check them out. Otherwise, do hang around for some cinematics. There was a little bit of detail and you guys wouldn't have seen, but I will shut up and I will leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. As always... Enjoy the rest of your day.